Hi guys, today's clip I would like to share with you um, exercises that will help with clients who have one of the abnormal gait patterns. Okay, so these exercises not only good to help correct the gait pattern but also help to strengthening muscles surrounding the hip joints. So I would like to talk about the normal gait pattern or normal process of walking gait pattern. Usually there are three stages of walking. So you start off with heel strike, that's the initial stage of stepping the foot forward. Then you're going to have the middle stance where you transfer the weight to the front foot. And then you have the last stage is heel off or toes off. Okay, usually most people will be walking normally if you have um, healthy muscles surrounding the hip joints or they, they, they all work uh, healthily. So some of the abnormal, abnormal gait patterns, one of them is called um, hip dropping. Okay, um, the official name is Trendelenburg if you have heard of it. Okay, so basically when you walk, one hip is dropping and then you step and then he, the hip is dropping and then come back up again. So, or you can see um, some of the models are walking like that on stage, okay, but it's considered unhealthy. Um, if you do not correct the gait patterns, um, it could uh, eventually, you could develop uh, some abnormal um, muscles surrounding your hip joints. Some of the factors that influencing the gait are, for example, your age. Okay, so your adult, as an adult, your gait patterns occurs every 10 years. Okay, it could be because of your uh, CNS disorders. For example, if you have, if you have a stroke or you have a certain disease like Parkinson's disease, or you have some kind of joint impairments. For example, you have tendonitis, arthritis, and you try to avoid pain when you walk. It could be a uh, habit because you were um, developing certain kinds of habits when you walk. It could be um, your height, your weight, or emotion. Okay, so the way we analyze the gait is we can do visual method. Okay, so you can go to the doctor's office, official therapist's office, and they could do an ana analysis for you. Or you can do a slow motion camera to observe your walking pattern yourself. Or you can do what it's called gait timing. Okay, so um, I will share with you um, now some of the exercises that will help strengthen your hip abductions or hip abductors. So usually the reason why you drop the hip is because your hip abductors are possibly weak or they are not working properly. So I hope you enjoy the exercises and if you have any questions, please let me know. So I will be showing a few exercises that would help strengthen hip a, B, ductus muscles, okay, the muscles surrounding the hip joints uh, that help uh, to correct the uh, hip drop gait pattern. The hip abductus muscles groups are your gluteus medius, minimus, and TFL muscles. So on the outside of the thighs and the butt, okay. So let's assume that I usually drop my hip on my right. I like to use a stability ball as a prop because when you use a prop it helps provide a feedback and proprioception to the body okay to begin i place a ball on the wall and i'm standing sideways towards my ball i have my top of my thigh bones pressing gently against the ball or to be precise around your greater trochanter from here i have my legs hip distance apart I will try to find my hip bones and then sometimes I like to have my clients have their hands here to make sure that they are keeping the pelvis level. Then from there, I ask them to transfer weight to your outside foot. So maybe just lift the heels off first. Now I want them to think about lifting that inside hip up and then bring it back down to neutral. So this is helping them to create awareness 
of how it is like when the hip is hiking which is going to be translating into your hip drop as you walk so then you might want to talk to them to them guiding through that as they hide the hip or drop the hips this affect the muscles not only the outside muscles of the legs or the hips the front of the hips but also your back muscles as you hike your right hip up your ql or your lower back muscles becomes shorter and this in return could create a lot of other problems i.e uh, back pain or could create a problem in your si joint okay so then from here, after a while, you can progress by lifting that leg off. Same thing, same drill. Think about lifting the hips up so this is not ideal. Thinking about level the hips. Thinking about spiral the ball up towards the ceiling so the hip is hiking up and then level the hip back down. So as they do this, they're getting the awareness how the hip is rolling up and down on my right but at the same time i'm strengthening my hip abductors of my standing leg so this leg has to work really hard to try to stabilize this hip so you get two birds in one stone mobility of this hip learning how the gait pattern is and also strengthening the muscles surrounding the standing legs from there you can back bring your legs down relax for a second okay from here I like to progress and do a little bit of movement in the hip joints. So try to find the neutral pelvis, hip bones aligned. Then slowly float the leg against the ball up. From here, I'm, we are trying to replicate the gait pattern. Straighten the legs, step forward, coming back. Lift up, straighten the leg heel strike transfer weight slightly and then step back so all this while tell your client try to keep the ball still so you don't want to slide up or down so if the ball slide up that means you're hiking the hip so you want to keep the ball level try not to disturb the ball and then probably after you do a few reps you're already complaining my hip abductors of the outside hip is burning and that's what you want them to feel okay <sighs> right so I hope these exercises are useful for you so it's actually good for all populations not only for those who have abnormal gait patterns so try these exercises out and let me know how it goes remember to do the other side as well so you want to make sure that you do both sides evenly thank you